Hey guys, drove to a uh, back 40 part of the farm so I could talk to you a little bit in the peaceful nature about something really important. It's on our phones, it's on our computers, ballistic software. This is going to be a quick tutorial on how to use it, what the functions mean, and we're going to try to not drag it out so you can get the most out of this video and not get bored watching. And I'm sure on the side I'll put something out there to keep you guys entertained for those of you with shorter attention spans. Let's get right into it. All right, I'm screen recording so you guys can follow along here. The very first thing we're going to come to when we open up stray lock is the distance or yards. That's not your zero. That's what you're asking it to do for the ballistic calculator. The slope angle degrees, that's the angle that you're going to be shooting at. I don't worry about it unless it's more than a fist. In other words, if I put my fist out and it covers the target, I'm good. If it's above or below my fist, I consider that an angle worth noting. And we'll use the app to go ahead and determine that angle and factor in the correction. Wind speed, wind direction, pretty self-explanatory. Now the wind direction is cool because you can actually tap into this and give it a swirl around and get your angle just the way you want it. And then you would hit save and that locks it in. Now the weather is pretty awesome on this too. You can actually get it from the uh, weather station or you can input your own. I always use the Medio and then I say use these values. It's basically taking all the values that the internet would give you if you checked like weather.com and inputting it into your solution and then you hit save and it uses them. The other thing that you can do in weather is hit that icon on the right and that is going to link up to any of the other accessories that you have that Bluetooth with um, stray lock. So that's your Kestrel, your, uh, your weather flow, stuff like that. I don't use that stuff. So I don't link it up, but a lot of people do, and it's a handy tool. Now the nitty gritty, what we really all want to know is how the heck do I set up my gun in here? What's the ballistic coefficient? How do I figure that out? So we're going to tap into the rifle section of this, and it's going to show us a bunch of different stuff. Now I already have a gun in here set up, and I'll give you those values at the end where you can pause it and just copy my stuff in case you want to you know, shoot the same slug as I am at roughly the same speed. However, we're gonna act like we have a brand new gun we gotta input. So we're gonna go up to the top. If you don't have anything, I think it says add rifle. I have stuff in, so we're gonna say change rifle. You can see I have a few in here already. We're just gonna hit the plus at the bottom left to start a new one, and it'll come up sample, replace with your data. So let's get in there and give it some data to work on. We're gonna change the title at the top, Let's just say M3FX impact. And then we're gonna input our twist rate. Now that's how many times a projectile will actually do a full rotation or in a certain amount of inches. In other words, if it takes 22 inches of travel to do one full rotation, you have a one in 22 twist. That is what I have. So I'm gonna hit 22 and that's the superior heavy in 30 caliber left hand twist my guess is unless you have some weird oddball custom rifle you're not gonna have to worry about that almost all barrels twist to the right which is important when it comes to spin drift but that's not something that i ever hit because all my rifles twist to the right so you probably just leave that alone now if you tap on the scope it's gonna ask you some really important questions your zeroing distance for me I like 50 yards and 30 caliber, lets me hit just about everything spot on up to 50 yards and a little bit beyond. Scope height in inches. This is where you're going to want to measure the center of your bore to the center of your objective lens in the scope, or at least that's how I do it. So in other words, the very center of the end of the scope, the far end of the scope that points towards the target, to the center of the barrel. For me that usually ends up being 2.75 inches because I am uh, using the FX no limit rings and canning it down, but I also have a high cheek weld. So 2.75, hit done, there it goes. Now scope click units. You can use MRAD, you can use MOA. They all pop up if you tap the little triangle. My scope is MOA and each click is worth a quarter of an MOA. So that's the 0.25. If it's in MRAD, you're probably at 1 10th. And if you click that, hit MRAD, you could you know, type in 0.1 and you're done there. Now I'm gonna switch it back to MOA just so everything makes sense. 
make it a quarter again and we're sitting there beautiful now the reticle tab you can hit if you're gonna do holdovers this is awesome there's a ton of optics loaded in here find your scope or one that has a similar reticle select it and you've got it now reticle is in first focal plane what they're asking you is do you have a second focal plane scope or a first focal plane scope I'm mostly using first focal plane now with the element Nexus and Titan so I would have that tap so that it's blue that means yes it's first focal plane that way if you want to use your reticle holdovers you can just tap on that and it'll show you save okay so now our scope is input in now we're gonna go to change cartridge we're gonna go back one actually because it's right here this is sample with your data zero offset all these things that we need to know to formulate so we're going to tap on it enter it again we're at sample because it's got uh, no idea what we're shooting right now if you're watching this video you're probably an air gunner and you're probably looking at the bottom right hand corner which has the pellet looking things that's what we're going to click if we want the easy route if we want the hard route we can enter all of our own stuff but for 99% of the shooting that we do, so say like 150 yards and under, if they have it loaded in there, you can roll with those numbers. You don't have to worry about the BC too much. It's just when you push it out further that you're going to want to tweak it on your own. And I have those solutions for you, and we're going to go over that. But let's click down here on the right. We have the caliber selection up on the upper left. 0.3 is 30 cal. You can click vendor. You can see that there's a bunch of different stuff in here already. We'll hit FX. What comes up, lo and behold, it's the hybrid slug we want to shoot. Now, you, you can just go to the blank on the vendor and then see all the different options, but the hybrid slugs are what we're going to use. So I tapped it. It says load this bullet. We're going to say yes. So now it's already input your bullet length, your bullet diameter, uh, the bullet weight. It even gives you a ballistic coefficient, which is awesome. And if you were to tap save on this, you would pretty much be good to go. So let's do that. We're going to hit save. Done. Okay. At 300 yards, let's see what it asks for here. We hit calculate up 7.7. Hmm. What happened here? Because there is no way that at 300 yards, that is the case. Bullet speed. They didn't load that in for us, did they? So just look at your solutions, and if it's wrong, like obviously wrong, you miss something. So bullet speed, feet per second, pretty important, right? Mine go at 967 feet per second. And because it's shooting compressed air and not, you know, uh, gunpowder, we're looking at pretty much the same velocities regardless of temperature. We shoot in extremes all the time here in New York. And the compressed air does a better job than the actual powder burners do in terms of getting muzzle velocities that are consistent. Let's go over the icons on the bottom really quick. The very first one on the upper left is a moving target. You're not going to have time to use that unless you're at some stage competition. Don't worry about that. The second icon is your additional data. This gives you some cool stuff, including the time of flight, which is just fun to know but the trajectory height is actually valuable to know because if you're in a farm situation where you have to shoot under a rooftop or under some wires you might want to check that and say well how high is my highest the apex in the middle of the flight or towards the middle third you know if you're going over you might want to know that kind of cool um, and then it gives you you know your spin drift now the spin drift that they give us for uh, air guns guys it's never right so I just add that mentally. I don't let the ballistic calculator add it because I know that at 200 yards, I'm going to be dealing with like two and a half MOA of spin drift. They're going to call it at like one and it's just not enough. So I just leave that to the side and add that into the calculation on my own later. Coriolis effect doesn't matter to us. Not really. I mean, we're just not in the air long enough for the earth to spin out from underneath of us and change our point of impact all that much, at least for our general shooting. Now, if you want to stretch it out really, really far, we can start talking about that. But again, you know, I mean, the variables in, let's say, a 400 yard shot with an air gun, if you're good enough to notice the Coriolis effect with those variables in, you're better than me. I applaud you and have at it to hit, you know, enable Coriolis effect. 
I don't worry about it personally. Now, the third icon is your target list. You type in, uh, if you put plus down on the left-hand corner here, you type in predetermined distances. Now, for me, I just started at 125 and ran up a bit. And the reason why I did that is because I wanted to know what, uh, what my targets would be in a normal hunting situation. And the only reason why I use target list is so that I can tap up here at the upper right-hand corner where you see a little Apple Watch icon. And then I get my data boom, right on my wristwatch, which is pretty handy because we like to film with our phones. We like to take phone calls and texts, and we don't always want to interrupt the phone usage or the camera usage to find a ballistic solution. Every now and then, like every couple hours, I'll update the weather on that as conditions change, and it boom, goes right there. It's a really awesome feature. Well done, Straylock. Now, the fourth one over is just info for geeks. Feel free to look at that. It's kind of cool. The settings, you can add vertical deflection of crosswinds to your results and you can determine the actual percentage you use. So what they're saying is if the wind's coming from the right and your uh, wind call is going to be 3 MOA, what percentage of that do you want us to add to your vertical or subtract from your vertical calculation? It's a really cool feature because with slugs, as the wind comes from the right, you're going to impact higher and as the wind comes from the left, you're going to impact lower. Straylock actually figures that out for you, which is so cool. So I do enable that and I like 12%. Add spin drift to results. I don't because it's never right. I just want to add it myself later. You can add a Coriolis. Do you want it to say up and down or plus and minus? That's all personal stuff. The slope angle measuring is from the phone camera and that is an awesome tool. And we're going to get to that in a sec. Now over here you've got converters. Those are really cool, fun, mostly info for geeks, but the one really neat thing is you can determine a BC from, a, from two speeds for any particular uh, projectile, but you wanna do it far away. So what they're saying is if you hit this one at the bottom, what's the distance between the two points? I have 300 yards in there. What's the feet per second units? Yes, that we're not gonna do like any other unit unless, I don't know, you're in a different country that wants to use other stuff, that's fine. You can select what you want. For us, the muzzle velocity is 967. Let's say the far velocity is 610. You can tell I've been in here already. Um, when then we hit calculate, boom, it spits out a BC that actually works with my gun and round. Awesome, awesome feature. The problem is you have to shoot over a chronograph at distance, so there's a chance you shoot it. It's up to you. Now the next one over, your Bluetooth devices, it's just stuff you wanna add if you wanna link up stuff. Um, a lot of people are into using the Kestrels. I don't, but if you wanted to link it up, that's where it would be. And the very last one, trajectory validation or truing, that's pretty awesome. So you get your, your spit out BC, right? And then you take a shot. Um, we're on speed, so the current muzzle velocity is 967. It tells you, hey, at 150 yards, you need 11.89. We say, no, 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 no. It took us 12.3 MOA to get the job done when we actually verified it in real life on a target. We hit calculate and it says, oh, okay, no problem. Your calculated velocity then is 962, not 967. So it's just a way for you to make the program line up with what you're finding in real world. And if you go over at the top and hit BC, it'll do the same thing for you there. So again, they're calling for you know, that 11 or whatever, we changed it to 12.3. Boom, so now it spits out 0.098 versus the 0.102. If you don't know what I'm talking about, we just need a different video on ballistic coefficients, but this is where you would true that. Now, this feature only works if you have single BC. Single BC really isn't gonna get the job done out to 200 yards in my experience. So we're gonna dive into that quickly and I know I'm talking so fast and that's because the first run of this video, it was like an hour and we can't have that. So feel free to watch it again if I'm going too fast for you. Sorry, it's the New York in me. We're gonna click into, oh, awesome. Been out here for two seconds. Got a tick right on my neck. Fantastic. Have the wife check me later. It always leads to good things anyway. So let's click into the rifle here. We've got ballistic coefficient where we have that 0.102. We're gonna click into that on the left of it. It says multi BC. So 
what we're doing here is we can actually add different VCs as the speeds change. We're going to say, yeah, at 967, that works for me. Now, we want to change the BC when we hit a certain speed. So let's say 0 0.089, or is it around that? 0 0.089, there we go. 0 0.089 is what I'm seeing mid-range. So let's say we start noticing that at about 750 feet per second. And then in real long range, we're noticing that the BC is terrible. Right? It's just dropping like a rock. So we can put in 0 0.045. Whoa. 0 0.045. Now, when you're typing in BCs, if you ever notice like a huge difference, you forgot the zero. 0. 0.0. There's almost nothing in the air gun world, the normal low power air gun world, that's going to be 0 0.1 and above. So 0 0.0, whatever number you need. Done. Input that. And we'll say out to zero feet per second. That works. So now we're going to save it. And we have multiple BCs added in now, and that's going to steepen the curve of the drop and what their calculations are asking you to do. You can tweak that over and over and over again, and I suggest, you know, starting with something, anything. I'm going to show you my BCs in 30 cal. You can step it down another caliber similarly, and then take it out to the range and see. And then by playing with those numbers and the speeds at which those multiple BCs engage, is how you can actually true it to your entire trajectory. I mean, I'm getting great dope out to like 355 yards, but it takes me about 15 minutes of playing with this multiple BC approach to get it done. Really sorry I'm talking so fast. Go back and watch it again if you need to, but we just can't take up that much time on YouTube and my computer. So if there's any clarification questions that you guys wanna know, hit me up. And I wanna show you one more thing actually. We're going to go back to the slope angle and degrees. This is a cool feature. You tap on that, and it's going to show us a crosshair. And you put that crosshair on whatever you want, and then hit OK. So if it's like all the way up on a silo that you're shooting, hit OK there, boom, it inputs the angle. And then when you calculate it, it's going to drastically change what the, uh, what the up and down adjustments are going to be for you because slope impacts the way that projectiles hit because it's really horizontal distance that uh, that's important. You can do the same thing by just ranging the base of the silo instead of going up towards the top or practically the same thing, especially for close shots. But I recommend using that slope whenever it's above seeing your target through your fist. I think it makes a big difference. A lot of info. Hope you guys liked it. Go back through it and then hit me up with questions and we'll be happy to respond. Peace. Three, two, done, done, done. <laughs>